Hey y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler and you've arrived at a new Tangle Tuesday. Welcome and thank you for being with me today. I am thrilled to be back and feeling better. And today's Tangle is going to be the new one by Zen Tangle called Ravel. Uh, there's a really nice write-up on tanglepatterns.com about it if you'd like to read. And let me show you how this goes. Uh, I have practiced this a few times, but I am sure that it is going to be uh, a work in progress for me as well, since it's fairly new and I have just now started to play with it. Those of you who know me know that I play a lot with tangles. I like to see where they can take me. So we're going to start with two little black orbs. You can put them wherever you would like. And then we're going to connect them with an open S type of a thing. So we're going to take off from one side and land on the opposite side at the other end. Okay? The next thing is to put a very thin little echo line on there. So you have a little tendril here. Now, um, as in garlic cloves, we're going to add auras, or more technically correctly, echo lines, as they are going to increase the size of our little bud here. I'm going to call it a bud. It reminds me of flowers. But then everything does, doesn't it? Okay? Now, the next step is to make another orb. And I'm going to put mine right there. Yours can be wherever you like. And I'm going to connect that with a shallow S, taking off from one side and landing on the opposite side on the other orb. And I'm going to repeat what I just did going to add a thin little tendril there. And then, as I come up to this, I'm going to fill this side out, but I'm going to draw behind here. Uh, drawing behind refers to um, pretending that this is going on beneath this. And so I'm going to go ahead and fill out each side. Now the beautiful thing about this uh, little blacked orb at the end is it is very forgiving as far as uh, bringing your lines in, in and uh, uh, you can always uh, increase the size there and make them bigger if you need it to be. Okay, so now just add orbs. You can make a long one that goes behind here. And after Hollabaugh fashion, let's see, we're going to come like this. And then we're going to add that extra tendril. So this is very much like the tangled garlic cloves, uh, where you have them all bunched up and sort of plopped on top of each other. However, this requires a little bit more work and thinking from the standpoint of um, figuring out where you want to go. But once you're comfortable with this, you can pretty much make it do anything, right? Um, I can take off here and land over here and do another one over here. Now, of course, in this instance, I'm not going to have as much room, but when I run into something, I'm just going to pretend like it goes behind, okay? Uh, I think I'll do another one down here. Connect that taking off from one side, landing on the opposite side as you come down. Add your thin little tendril in the middle. And then echo these lines on each side until you have a nice fat little blob. 
maybe blob isn't the perfect word to use there, but y'all know what I mean. Um, let's see. I think I will, well, let's not move this around too much. I'll put another one here. And I think I'm going to go from here. Taking off from this side, going beneath this and landing over here. Then I'm going to add that first little sliver that will be the center. And then I'm going to continue to add these little extra echo lines on each side to sort of give that a little fatter, uh, fuller look, more full. I don't know. And don't forget this side. And as you reach uh, an area that has already been drawn over, that's fine. Don't do that. <laughs> All right. And then as you have these orbs, wherever you like to place them, you can round those out. Make them a little bit more pronounced. Now me being me, I will most definitely come in here with uh, uh, my little jelly roll and probably knock out a little highlight into those if I want. Um, I want this want to continue here. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. But the point is, this is very intuitive, meaning you may do it, place it however you like. Uh, they, they don't all have to be bunched up like this, but this tangle, the sort of the point of this tangle is the bunching and the drawing behind. Um, now, if you uh, if you really want to see some lovely examples of this, go check it out on tanglepatterns.com. Uh, they have uh, some of Maria's, they have a link to uh, the Zentangle blog post where they uh, introduce this tangle and some of Maria Thomas's art is on there, which is of course awesome. One of the things uh, on her examples that she did that I thought was a really good embellishment was to uh, put little... Um, little uh, blacked in stripes or I don't know what you would call that on um, along the center of each one sort of like this which gives this a very cool look uh, you could um, along the middles you could orb them if you wanted to put orbs in but also dress it up and embellish it in a very simple way yeah so really the you could even stripe these if you wanted the sky's the limit um, this is great for um, mushing into little spots that need something interesting uh, let's talk really quickly about shading on this um, again, I don't teach shading, but I will tell you what I'm going to do. Um, when you have things that overlap, such as this, you're going to want to emphasize that overlap by adding graphite along the edges of the ones that seem to be on top, if you will. Um, such as I'm doing here, it's just going to offset the, offset the, um, levels so that you can you get more of a layered look uh, let's see here now naturally where these lines come together if you want to add some graphite there you can uh, that is a natural point of shading as as the convergence of the lines uh, tends to emphasize that anyway And then since this one is sitting on top, I'm going to uh, take my graphite around this area. And just really 
where they overlap and the ends, that's going to be your most uh, important part for um, shading. By the way, um, if this happens to your tortillon where the end gets pushed in like this, uh, see where this is all um, looks like a crayon here on the tip. Um, what you can do is uh, take a paper clip, bend it out, put it up in the hole here, and push that back up and out. I just don't have one with me. I'm going to use it anyway. But uh, this is a common issue, and so if that's a problem for you, that's how you fix it. But it's not too bad right now, and so I'm going to use it. And you can see just a tiny bit of graphite here really gives uh, this tangle a lot of dimension and a real, uh, much more of a 3D look. Oops, I'm gonna have to get the mono zero out. Now the other thing you can do, as I mentioned, is you can take your uh, jelly roll. I had one right here. Take your jelly roll and if you got if you weren't able to leave a little spot you can just very gently well this is the number 10 I can tell <laughs> that might be too much. Just put a tiny little dot very much enhances what you're doing. Uh, also, uh, I think one of Maria's uh, examples was on uh, Renaissance tile, which is the tan tile, which I love. Um, and she used her, her white chalk uh, to put a little highlight in, in the middles. So um, something to think about, lots of possibilities for this. I can't wait to play with it. Um, we may see this uh, on our next panel on our dingbats. I do plan to finish that up and uh, it, we will probably need next week to get everything finished, but it's going to be awesome. And I do apologize for being gone. We sort of lost our momentum, but uh, I've got some really awesome things planned for the holidays. And with any luck, things will get rolling again like they're supposed to. I do appreciate you guys coming back and waiting for me to uh, start to feel better. I really appreciate your support. Thank you. And I will see you guys tomorrow for our part two of our last Dingbats video. So uh, thank you for being with me today, and I will see you tomorrow.